By the numbers, it's Canada's most violent region. Awash in bootleg alcohol, haunted by history, hamstrung by a chronically overstretched government, Nunavut's growing pains are manifest in a violent crime rate seven times the Canadian average. It's become too glaring to ignore. Late last year, two young men were shot dead in the hamlet of Cape Dorset. The RCMP decided to pull its local members, prompting national media coverage. What's behind it? The Globe and Mail visited several Nunavut communities to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Calwith Local 10. Sixty percent of, uh, of our population is under the age of 25. So we have a lot of uh, socio-economic challenges here, a lot of people who are unemployed. We're adapting to Western culture and uh, also adding our traditional culture at the same time. First, in the busy capital of Iqaluit. The jail is overflowing and the RCMP detachment is run off its feet, while the territorial government struggles to meet its citizens' most basic needs. It's difficult. We, we don't have enough resources. We don't have, don't have enough people. We don't have an addictions facility in, in Nunavut. The biggest issue in our territory is housing. That would eliminate a lot of these um, suicides. West to the artist community of Cape Dorset, where cash is king, giving rise to a culture of alcohol dependency, drug abuse, and fits of violence. To get educated, you had to go to residential school, and that had a very devastating effect on our people. And last, to Repulse Bay, situated smack dab on the Arctic Circle, a community rooted in the land uses gospel and group therapy to exercise heavy psychological baggage. We probably weren't as prepared um, for the creation of this territory as we could have been. We have to begin to acknowledge that we have problems and, and figure out how we're going to address them. These are the stories of those towns and their people.